Did you just wake up? Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a good sleep? Yeah. Yeah, you had a good sleep? Some yeah. curly whirly hair. Say hello to the camera. Hello. Say we are going to. <laughs> Why am I expecting that? Of course you don't. Anna. Yeah, you can say hello. Anna. Say yeah, that's Anna. Say Kelly. Kelly. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Kelly? Kelly. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Thank you, Anna. Oh no, there goes my Kelly. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm sitting down low because I wanted to be nice and comfortable so I could do a one year review of my Kelly 25 in Swift Leather Return. And this is going to be a one year in review, wear and tear, and my thoughts overall with using the bag for a full year. Now before I get into the video, of course I'm sure most of you are already subscribed that are watching this video, but if you are not, then I would really appreciate if you would hit that subscribe button below, and also hit the bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, which is generally at least once a week, but on occasion I may upload two videos a week. I would really appreciate it if you do subscribe. I do get quite a lot of views on my Hermes videos. However, I'm not seeing my, subs my subscriber count climb as much as the views. But that, look, I understand that there are people that just come in to watch videos on YouTube and, you know, they just don't go ahead and click the subscribe button. Totally get that. I am guilty of that as well. If you are a silent watcher, I would appreciate if today, if you would hit that subscribe bell so I can stay motivated to keep filming YouTube videos. Now, Let's get into today's wear and tear, one year in review, my thoughts of the Kelly 25. Okay, first I'm going to have to say that I am having to drink some of my Teamy tea. This is something that was sent to me very kindly by the brand Teamy. I'm not trying to do any kind of shameless plug, I just that I haven't eaten lunch so I'm kind of hungry and the reason I haven't eaten lunch is because I wanted to sit down and film this video. So I am having to drink this tea to stay hydrated and hopefully curb some cravings for food. This tea I have spoken about on my Instagram, it is fantastic. I actually um, chose this one because I do suffer from gluten intolerance and IBS and so far I can say that it has really helped to um, prevent bloating whenever I eat any kind of food that tend to trigger especially in the IBS side so yeah I do definitely recommend this I just had to say it because I needed to take a drink because it took me about 10 times to say Kelly 25 Swift Return for some reason I don't know why okay so this is the Kelly 25 it's in the color gris asphalt it is in retonne style and the leather is swift. So, firstly, um, the twilly bow, I am going to take it off. I don't always have a twilly on my handle. I do on occasion and then a lot of the time I don't because I don't have time to tie one. At the end of this video, I have included a clip of how I tie the twilly bow onto the bag handle in case you are interested how I do it. First, I'm going to start off with talking about when I bought this bag, who I bought it from, how much I paid. And I'm also going to tell you the assumed, you know, current retail of the Kelly 25 and Retone. So I bought this one year ago from a Instagram consignment store in Singapore called JLIG99. I will include her handle down below. I have mentioned her before on my channel. She is a reseller that I do recommend. She is a consignment store where she will sell on behalf of on behalf of other people in Indonesia, Singapore, in Asian countries, and also Japan. She does also cater for Japan as well. Any brand new or pre-loved Hermes bags. She does also do a bit of Chanel as well, but primarily she focuses on Hermes. And I bought this bag for 16,800 and something. Like it was under 17,000 and it was under 16,900. So I did pay a premium for this bag. However, I was okay with paying a premium because one, it was the exact color that I wanted. Two, I wanted gris asphalt and at the time that I wanted it, gris asphalt was fetching a very high premium because it was current kind of last season's color at the time. And three, it removes the hassle of me trying to get one in store and get the exact specs that I wanted, which we all know can be very, very difficult. I'm not 100% sure on the retail price now because Hermes did have a price increase and it varied from 9% to 11%. And the last price I have is from 2018 for a Celia Epsom Kelly and it was 
$14,125 back in 2018. And that's for a cellia. Now, Reton, Reton A is usually about 1300 less, but in Swift, it may only be about $1,000 less. So I'm just gonna base it on 1300 because let's assume that you, you're interested in a Togo. Swift is about $300 more expensive, generally 300 to 500, I'm not 100% sure. To include like a um, screen recording of me doing the calculation. So I've based it on um, Togo. So let's say Togo is $1,300 cheaper than Celia, which means that back in 2018, it would have been 12,825 Australian dollars. Now let's assume that the price increase was only 9%, which I'm sure it probably wasn't because I've noticed that the smaller bags have gone up even more in price. Like the Constance had an 11% price increase. Okay. So let's assume it was 9% and that means that this bag this year would have been $13,979 if it was in Togo. If it was an 11% price increase, this bag, the retail price would be 14,235 in Togo in Retone. We could assume that if it is in Swift, it probably at the very most would have been 14,800. Irregardless of that, I've still paid a premium. So let's say, let's assume for, you know, assumption's sake for this video, with the 11% price increase, with it being Swift leather, probably would have been $14,800 this year, and I paid $16,800, so I've paid a $2,000 premium for this bag. So I've used this bag for a year, and I'd say I probably used it around about 40 times in the year. It's probably my, actually it is definitely my most used bag. That's one of the corners there. So I can't see any real, actually there's a little bit of wear on it, but you can just hardly see it, that's all. That's the other front corner. It's hard to get the camera to not focus on me. And there's no wear on that one. Now the back corners. Can't see any wear. And then the other back corner. And there is no wear on that either. Now the feet of the bag, they still actually have the stickers on. I have left them on. Um, okay, I do see some wear. So this is how the feet of the, like this is how the bag looks essentially on the bottom. The stitching has frayed. Again, it may not even show up on camera. And on the other side, there is some like dirty marks kind of around here too on the bottom of the bag. But otherwise the other side seems totally fine. Now at the back of the bag, it's currently stuffed with a bag puff pillow. So that's why that pocket's kind of pushing through. See any sort of marks. Um, this little tab here is sort of kind of like flicking up a little bit, kind of lifted slightly, but no stitches are coming off. It's perfectly intact because Hermes craftsmanship is absolutely impeccable, can stand the test of time. And there is no other marks on the bag as far as I can see. There is one tiny, tiny, tiny little dot over there. Again, may not show up on camera, but I could see it in person. It's so tiny and it may clean off if I bothered to clean the bag. I actually haven't cleaned this bag in a good, I think maybe seven months. So yeah, <laughs> this is my most used bag. And it's also the bag that I kind of beat up a little bit. Like I'm a bit slack with upkeeping. Uh, now the top of the bag, I can see some marks from where the handle, where you attach the strap, has left some dirty marks. Now the sides of the bag, can't see anything so they seem fine. I can see here how this has kind of got like a different groove shape. See how that's like a line there, but then on this side it's kind of got that curving here. It's probably just because the bag's kind of going forward a little bit. It may even just be because I've used a bag puff pillow and maybe it's kind of overstuffed it too much because it's Swift leather. Swift is a very soft leather. It's very malleable. It will take um, on the form of whatever you're stuffing inside the bag. And the thing is, is that with Swift, they do tend to slouch faster, but because I've had that stuffing inside the bag, I haven't noticed any kind of slouching. Like it stands up on its own in my um, little bag closet. Now the handle, no marks, and that's probably because it's a shoulder bag and I don't have to use the top handle very often. And then I have the Twilly on sometimes as well. 
There is no marks on the front of the bag as far as I can see, just having a good look up close because that's the kind of area where you would tend to scratch it. But there is not, and I'm really rough with my bags. My Constance 24 was in Epsom and it was scratched to scratch so much in so many places and I barely used that bag. I probably used that bag maybe 20 times at the very most since I bought it. And obviously I've already sold it now and this bag I've used more than 40 times. I'd say I probably use it 50 times in this, this year and there is not a single scratch on the bag. Cannot see one single scratch. Other than like the dirty marks, you would, on the front of the bag is quite typical where I've had scratches on the, on the Constance, on my Kelly 25 in Epsom Cellier, which I also sold. This has not a single scratch on it. So I have completely debusted the myth that swift leather scratches easily. It does not. It shows scratches on dark colors, like black, like navy. Those colors you will see scratches on swift because it's dark. And a surface scratch tends to create like a lighter cast. When you scratch the bag, it creates like a light cast. And that's why on dark colors, you can see the scratches on Swift. You can buff them out with your finger. You can buff them out with the Chanel, poly, like the Chanel glove that you get with lambskin bags. You can buff it out with conditioner. They do tend to blend in when you do buff the bag with conditioner, especially you can blend them in. Really bad pressurized scratches will never be able to be truly buffed in, but you can get rid of that lighter whitish kind of gray cast that's created when you scratch the bag. Unavoidable to get scratches on the hardware, but on a Kelly bag, you get far less scratches because the way that the sangles tend to sit, usually you have them sitting underneath the flap like this, and it's not really rubbing, like it's not um, creating any kind of scratching effect on anything other than leather. Like there's just leather under there and then there's the metal from underneath the tab here, but it barely does anything. I still have the protective sticker on here just because it's not been peeling off. It's not exposed really to any kind of moisture or anything. So I haven't had to take that one off. The Kelly hardware does not scratch anywhere near as easily as the hardware on a Birkin or a Constance. Birkin and a Constance hardware definitely expect that it will scratch and it's pretty much unavoidable. So let's have a look inside the bag. Obviously it's how the inside of, a bag is inside of a bag is going to look, it depends on the person, but mine's totally fine. I use like pouches and stuff like that for my bag. There is a bit of like, I think there's like a bit of a, yeah, orangey kind of mark on the inside of the flap just here. I've just noticed it must've been maybe like lipstick or something or lip gloss. It's just up around here. The zip still works really good as well, but I actually never use this zip. I never use this pocket. Oh, there's a raincoat in there. That might be why I've got an indentation showing. <laughs> I forgot I put the raincoat inside the bag. Okay, there we go. Not as bad anymore. That's why that was happening. There was a raincoat in the bag. So as you can see, Swift is a very soft leather. It's malleable. It will take on the shape that of whatever you put inside the bag. So don't leave your contents inside the bag, especially if they're like poking like this. Like, don't do that. You'll end up with an indentation in your Swift bag. It'll be there'll be this point in your bag. So do not do that. Only stuff your bags with like something like this, something that's soft perfectly shaped or just use air pillows. So I buy my inserts from Hermes Luxury in a Bag. She's a seller on Instagram. And the reason I buy from her is because I find them to be quite soft. However, I don't use it in this bag because I find that it restricts the space in the bag because it's a very small bag as it is. And the inserts take away from that. I do use an insert in my Birkin 30 because it's a very big bag anyway. So that little bit of space lost means nothing. But in a bag like this, every little millimeter, centimeter counts. So that's how it looks with the insert. You find that with the insert, it kind of pops the size out a little bit though, unfortunately on the bag. Of course, there's some scratching on the hardware of the strap. There's a stamp on the strap that's still nice and intact, not rubbed off at all. Just having a look at it. It doesn't seem like there is any, no stitches popped as far as I can see. No, no stitching. Slight fraying of thread only, and uh, not of any concern. Some like the stitches kind of um, losing their wax, that's all that's happening. They lose their wax, so then the cotton kind of frays, it kind of doesn't break down, it just lifts some of the cotton, fine cotton threads off. But they do saddle stitch the bag, which means it's like a double stitch anyway, so I wouldn't be all too worried if your stitches are sort of slightly fraying. But yeah, nothing on the strap that's of any concern. No color transfer either 
on the strap or on the bag. There was nothing on the bag that was color transfer and I do wear dark denim. However, I just make sure that my denim is color fast. The corchette and lock I never use on the bag, so that's totally fine. I've actually been caught in the rain with this bag and had absolutely no problem. Because Swift is a very oil soaked leather, like it's very rich in like, I don't know if it's like oil, if that's the right word, but it's like an oil. It's so buttery and soft, so it's rich in oil, because I'm not 100% sure if it's like oil, it's must, it's obviously something else. Um, and I find that because of that, when it does get wet, it just, like it doesn't repel from the bag, but it doesn't do anything to the bag. Like it kind of, it will go darker and then it just disappears. Kind of like how, if you're familiar with Berenia, the traditional Berenia leather, if it gets wet, it just dries and disappears. I feel like Swift does the exact same thing as that. If you get it wet, it just dries and disappears. However, if I do get the bag wet, I do wipe it over because it's finished leather, so it's kind of got a coating on it, so you just kind of wipe it off. But I have found that when it does leave these darkened spots, it just dries and disappears. I have done this before in one of my other videos when I did a comparison of the Kelly 25 Celia versus the Kelly 25 Retone. Return, Retone, Return, whatever. On the purse forum, someone says it's Retone. Someone said to me it's just Return. Doesn't matter. We all know what I'm saying. Now, what I, back to what I was saying. Um, we're going to see what fits in the bag. Even though I have already done this before, in case you haven't watched that video, let's go and pop some things inside. And for the sake of it, I have left the organizer so we can see if there's, there is all that much difference. <laughs> So that's with all the contents inside. Let's close it up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's full. But that's okay, you could carry the bag like that, that's fine. If we take out the insert, I could still, I could fit a little bit more, made it look as bulgy. That's the only thing that I find with the difference with the insert. Like say, right now I wouldn't be able to fit a nappy in with the insert out, I very likely could. how already there is this big space just right there where I could fit more in. I could now fit a packet of tissues inside the bag. I could easily fit a nappy inside the bag and I can put in the raincoat. So let's show you what's in. So as you can see I've now put tissues in there, the raincoat. Sides are okay. So yeah, it looks about the same, like full capacity as what it did with the insert, except I could just fit that little bit more. The packet of tissues and the raincoat fit in. The raincoat may have fit in with the organizer, but it would have start to, started to really bulge at the back, whereas like this, it's not bulging at all. The thing I want to touch on before I just talk about how you can actually carry the bag and how I use the bag. Um, now, typically this is how people carry their Kellys. Obviously, they'll put the strap on. I haven't done that yet. Um, but they will just close the bag like this, and then they have the sangles kind of hanging around like this. You really shouldn't do it like that, especially when the bag is full. So when I had the bag at the full capacity, when I had filled it up, what I should have done is at least put on one sangle. So twist the lock, attach the sangle, twist again. At least put one sangle on. So it helps, to, the sangle actually helps to carry the weight of the bag. If you always have these, these little sangle toggles dangling down and you, full, you fill up the bag to the capacity that I shown earlier, especially if you add a drink bottle in, it can actually cause this lock here to get very loose and just start spinning around on its own. As you can see with this, I have absolutely no problem. It's not loose. If I twist the lock, it's nice and tight, like it's giving me some Resistance. I'm gonna go ahead before we wrap up this video attach the strap so this bag can be worn As we all know can be worn on the crook of the arm Can be worn on the shoulder on the shoulder strap It can also be worn across body But bearing in mind if you're gonna wear the bag cross body it may sit up high on you So yeah, the strap is 92 centimeters. You can wear it cross body but if you are quite tall, or even if you're, say, just above average height, it probably will sit quite high on you. You may feel a bit uncomfortable. You may feel a bit funny with the handle kind of sitting under your boob. But for me, because I'm only five foot two, I'm 
not even exactly five foot two. I'm under, just under five foot two, but I'm over five foot one. So the bag, I can wear it crossbody and it's still okay. It's still comfortable. I don't tend to favor it in that way just because when you're kind of opening the bag with that handle, it kind of gets a little bit in the way. But if I need to be really, really hands-free when I'm loading my daughter in the car, getting her out of the car, putting groceries in the car, all those sort of things where the bag can just kind of get a mind of its own and sway and fall off the shoulder, then I chuck it on crossbody to make sure that I don't drop my bag to the ground and go plummeting. That is all that I have to say. My one year in review with my Kelly 25 in gray asphalt, in swift leather, in the Retorn shape. Of course, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them down below. And as usual, go over to my Instagram person fleek where you will see me using this bag and lots of photos of me having used this bag. It is my most used Hermes bag and is my absolute favorite Hermes bag. But thank you very much for watching. Um, like I said, if you aren't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel and also hit the thumbs up if you did like this video. And otherwise, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.